Hey, this is episode 227, and today I'm answering a bunch of your questions. Now, if you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. So many of you have been listening to my previous episodes and being like, it's kind of windy and there's things happening. That's record. <laughs> That's because I record the podcast on my boat and um, my dogs are running around everywhere and the water is slashing up against the hull which is the side of the boat and there's not much I can really do about it and it's creaking because the waves are moving the boat and the boat creaks so apologies for that but just imagine you're here with me in the Bahamas soaking up the sun and listening to the waves slap against the hull it's been a very long day I'm so excited to get into today's episode and re-energize myself if you want to catch up on previous podcast episodes you can head on over to ketodietpodcast.com okay let's do this thing Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working. Did you know imbalanced hormones are generally at the core of all struggles that women face when it comes to our weight? Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get started with the show. First question is from Kimberly. I just joined a farm CSA program and while most of the winter veggies are ideal, salad, greens, kale, they do include winter vegetables like carrots and rutabaga. I'm a year and a half into keto and actual carb ups didn't work for me, but I can definitely handle around 20 grams of net carbs. Any advice for incorporating some root vegetables aside from just smaller portions? Most people online say don't touch them, but is that just because they're easy to overdo or is the type of carb problematic? Kimberly, this is a great question. Now, you said that you didn't respond well to carb ups. I would guess that that's because it was just too many carbs. I'm wondering if also you didn't give it a good try. Um, But if it was because it was just too many carbs, if you know that you can only handle 20 grams of net carbs, then any advice for incorporating some root vegetables aside from just smaller portions? They're going to have to be smaller portions. If you know that your body can only handle 20 grams of net carbs, then you're going to have to eat just a very small amount of carrots, rutabaga, and parsnips and such. In fact, carrots and rutabaga make a great mash if you just steam them and then mash them and add a bunch of oil. Now, the thing with any food really, including bread. I mean, Sam's question later on is, can I consume bread if it fits my daily carb intake? If we're strictly talking about macros, okay, if I eat a big bowl of strawberries, a big bowl of strawberries on their own is going to spike my blood sugar. And maybe a big bowl of strawberries is like 15 grams of carbohydrates. But if I pair those strawberries with full fat coconut milk and I drizzle a bunch of nut butter on there, All of a sudden, if I were to calculate out the macros, it's like 70% fat. Now, all of a sudden, it's not spiking my blood sugar. So it's less about the actual food and more with what you pair the food with, right? Does that make sense? So Kimberly, if you're getting a bunch of carrots and rutabaga, don't just cut up a carrot and eat it. Mash up that carrot, put it with some rutabaga, add a bunch of coconut milk and coconut oil and make some mashed carrot rutabaga awesomeness or saute the carrots and ghee and sprinkle salt on them have it with slices of butter or melt cheese on top of the rutabaga all of a sudden it's a keto meal so i think oftentimes we get into this is this food keto and it's such a silly question and not to say that what you're asking is silly but i think media and like this constant shifting of information that's not true causes us to make really poor choices, not from a place of education, but a place of fear. Like, I think so many of us are logical, beautiful human beings, but we give our power away. And you know, if you eat carrots and you don't feel good, you don't feel good. No blog post can tell you that still eat carrots because they're so good for you. If you don't feel good eating carrots, don't eat carrots. If you really want bread because, you know, your grandma makes bread and it's delicious and you put a bunch of butter on there, then your macros are different and you might be able to handle it. If you are celiac, no amount of bread is going to help the situation. It's so individual. So I hope that helped, Kimberly. It really is a matter of 
having smaller portions, changing up the macros, adding more fat to it, perhaps protein, have like a good juicy steak with those carrots and rutabaga, and then the macros change of your whole meal and it affects you differently. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. Superfat is a certified keto and paleo line of macadamia and almond-based convenient on-the-go nut butter pouches with five different dairy-free flavors, including MCT probiotic, protein, nut butter, uses sunflower seed protein, which is a major win, no pea protein, yeah, and nitro coffee MCT. My favorite flavor is cacao coconut, lightly sweet, perfectly salted, and so chocolatey. With 22 grams of plant-based fats, 3 grams of net carbs, 2 grams of sugars with no added sugar, 5 grams of protein, 6 grams of fiber. I chow down on super fat when we're sailing, pack them in my trail bag, and on long flights for easy fat on the go. Each pouch contains about 50% more than other nut butter pouches with Healthy plant-based fats found in super fat support sustained levels of energy, cognition, and mental clarity. Macadamia nuts are found in all flavors and are scientifically proven to help speed up fat metabolism, plus they taste so good. Use the code Leanne for 15% off when you go to superfat.com. Again, that's Leanne at superfat.com for 15% off your order. Enjoy! Okay, next question, Maddie. Hey there, I have a question about fiber during a carb up. I've been on keto for three months now and feel great mentally, but have lost next to no fat. I'm a power lifter and learning about the benefits of carb ups was really encouraging. I'm wondering about fiber though. Are carb up calculations net or total carbs? I'm 165 pounds, so my number would be about 83 grams. Two or three times a week. Is that 83 grams of net for dinner or does 83 gram include fiber? Thank you so much. Um, When I'm doing my calculations, uh, the 83 grams based on your calculation would be like total including fiber, like everything. That's what works best for my body, but it might be different for yours. And like, I know I sound like a broken record and so many of you stop listening to the podcast because I'm like, I don't know, just try it on for yourself. And you're like, I don't want that answer. I just want like an actual answer. If anyone tells you that they know the answer to your body, they're lying. Like they're just lying. They can't possibly know. Your body is so uniquely yours. And so you have to do this discovery. So Maddie, try it for three weeks, do 83 grams of total carbs. Okay, and then for another three weeks, do 83 grams of net carbs. What felt better? How did you perform? Then choose that. Make sense? Awesome. Next question. Angela. Hi there. I love your podcast. Thank you so much. I was just listening to your message about CBD. I have a Frenchie with a painful IVDD flare up. Can you tell me if CV Sciences, it's CV Sciences capsule you purchased for your dog. There are many different ones on their site. Thanks again. Uh, We buy the 15 milligram CV Sciences capsules for Lexi. She's on 15 milligrams. What What research I've done is that it's five milligrams of CBD per 20 pounds of your dog. Um, Now that's just for our dog. That's what works well. Now, on the flip side, this one time I gave Pebbles, our like 10 pound Pomeranian, the 15 milligram capsule that our 60 pound German Shepherd gets. And I like freaked out that she was going to die and she didn't. So <laughs> that was good. I wouldn't make, you know, I wouldn't make a habit of it, but it's not, she didn't die. So that's really, really good. If you want more information about CBD oil, how I'm using it, Um, with my family, with myself, you can head back to episode 206 of the podcast where I share some details with you about CBD oil. But yeah, the CV Sciences capsule is what I purchased for my dog. It's yellow, 15 milligrams. And it's the capsule, not the liquid, because the liquid has stevia, I think, in it. And I do not give my dog stevia. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. 
Low carb snacks are super easy to make, but sometimes the effort plus finding all the ingredients is just too much work. We're talking the cookie types of snacks, brownie bites, blondie bites, the lunch friendly variety that satisfy your sweet tooth, pack well no matter what you're up to and keep you flying on high fat goodness throughout the day. Now fat snacks creates low carb keto friendly baked goods that are packed with healthy fats and actually taste good. Like for real, I've served them up to friends and they had no idea that they were eating sugar-free, gluten-free treats. Now, Kevin loves their new Blondie Bites. I can't have too many because they contain dairy, but the consistency is absolutely perfect. You can find fat snacks at Whole Foods, Sprouts, The Vitamin Shop, Wegmans, and thousands of other retail locations in the cookie section, or get them online by going to fatsnacks.com slash KDP and use the code KDP for free shipping. Again, that's Fat Snacks. S-N-A-X dot com slash K-D-P and K-D-P for free shipping. Enjoy. Okay, next up, question from Jessica. Hi, Leanne. I've been doing keto for just over a week now and I'm testing with a blood ketone meter and I'm still not in ketosis. I've also not lost a single pound. I am due to have my period next week, so I'm curious if that has any effect on testing positive for ketones. Also, do certain sweeteners have a negative effect on ketones? I usually use Splenda. Jessica, stop using Splenda. (laughs) Oh my gosh, stop using Splenda. Switch over to Stevia or monk fruit, please. Please. Yeah, sweeteners can have a major effect on your ketones. You can go to previous podcast episodes. I don't know off the top of my head which ones they are, but if you just scroll through the feed, there are so many that I've done on sweeteners to kind of give you more information if you want to go as far as to understand why. But I choose monk fruit and stevia. Personally, I stay away from all the other ones because they can have a massive impact on your blood sugar. Um, Even stevia, I mean, any sweetener, I feel like could affect your ability to stay in ketosis, depending on how sensitive you are. Now, Jessica, you've only been doing keto for a week, which is great. Congratulations. That's amazing. But it's totally normal to not see blood ketones that early in your process. And to say that you've not lost a single pound, I would relate that to the sweeteners. And also it's a lot, you know, like your body, you're about to get your period next week. So your body's already starting to hold on to a lot of water. So I would switch how you're measuring things and maybe do actual measurements of your body and stop jumping on the scale because your the scale is really just your relationship to gravity. And there's so much more at play there with how much water you're retaining and everything that it can be challenging to say like, I'm a total failure on keto. It's been a week and I haven't lost a pound and it's like a week before your period. And of course, you're going to be holding on to a lot more water than normal. Um, And also, as you adjust your ketogenic diet, because you're new, you're probably eating more because you're hungry and your body doesn't understand that it has to use fat as energy. It's a very transformative time and it's going to take you a little bit to get into the groove of things. So I hope that was helpful. Next up on the podcast, Sunday, February 2nd, we have episode 228. Brooke has taken over the show sharing how to build your keto pantry, family edition. So if you're looking to support your family on keto, you're going to want to listen to that episode. And then Wednesday, February 5th, episode 229, I'm sharing with you the 10 things you should never do on your ketogenic diet. So hold tight and I will see you soon. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor should it be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. 